Hello and welcome to our channel Recap Revolution for yet another book summary video. We will be summarizing the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. In this video, we'll be exploring the key ideas and strategies from the book, which offers a proven approach to building good habits and breaking bad ones. Please subscribe and open your notifications for more awesome content to come. Brief Summary of Atomic Habits In summary, Atomic Habits by James Clear is a guide to developing positive habits and breaking negative ones. It argues that small, incremental changes can lead to significant improvements over time. The book explains the role of cues, routines, and rewards in the formation of habits and offers strategies for changing habits by modifying these components. Clear also emphasizes the importance of aligning habits with one's values and goals and creating a positive environment to support good habits. To break negative habits, he suggests using the inversion principle and the two-minute rule. Overall, the book provides practical strategies for making small, incremental changes that lead to lasting improvement. Section 1. What are habits and how do they work? In the first section of Atomic Habits, James Clear defines a habit as a combination of a cue, a routine, and a reward. The cue is the trigger that initiates the habit, the routine is the behavior or action that follows, and the reward is the positive outcome that reinforces the habit. Clear explains that habits are formed through a process called habit formation loop, which consists of four stages, cue, craving, response, and reward. The cue prompts the desire or craving for the reward which in turn leads to the response or routine, and finally the reward reinforces the behavior, completing the loop. For example, if you have a habit of checking your phone first thing in the morning, the cue might be the alarm going off, the routine is picking up your phone and checking it, and the reward is the satisfaction of seeing any notifications or messages. Clear also provides the example of a habit of brushing your teeth, where the cue might be seeing your toothbrush, the routine is brushing your teeth, and the reward is the feeling of a clean mouth. Another example is the habit of going for a run. Where the cue might be lacing up your running shoes, the routine is going for a run, and the reward is the feeling of accomplishment and endorphins afterwards. Clear explains that habits can be both positive and negative, and that by understanding the habit formation loop, we can identify and modify the cues, routines, and rewards in order to change our habits. For example, if you want to break the habit of checking your phone first thing in the morning, you could try changing the cue by placing your phone in another room at night, or altering the routine by doing something else before picking up your phone, such as stretching or making your bed. You could also try changing the reward by finding other sources of satisfaction or motivation in the morning, such as reading a book or writing in a journal. On the other hand, if you want to develop a habit of exercising regularly, you could try setting a specific time to exercise as the cue and rewarding yourself with a healthy snack or a sense of accomplishment after the routine of exercising. Clear also notes that habits can be contagious and that we can use this to our advantage by surrounding ourselves with people who have positive habits that we want to adopt. Overall, understanding the habit formation loop is a key component of building good habits and breaking bad ones as it allows us to identify and modify the cues, routines, and rewards that drive our habits. Section 2. The Power of Small Habits In the second section of Atomic Habits, James Clear argues that small, incremental changes can lead to significant improvements over time. He uses the metaphor of the aggregation of marginal gains to illustrate this concept, explaining that small improvements in various areas can combine to create a significant overall improvement. Clear provides several examples to illustrate this concept. One example is the British cycling team, which made small improvements in various areas such as nutrition, equipment, and training methods and as a result, experienced a significant improvement in their performance. For example, the team found that using a special type of massage gel on their legs helped to reduce muscle fatigue, and as a result, 
they were able to improve their cycling times. Another example is the Japanese concept of Kaizen, which involves continuous small improvements in a manufacturing process. Clear argues that this approach can be applied to personal habits as well, and that small changes can lead to significant improvements in areas such as productivity, fitness, and relationships. For example, if you want to improve your productivity at work, you could try making small changes such as setting aside specific times for emails and phone calls or using a timer to stay focused on tasks. These small changes can add up to significant improvements in productivity over time. Clear also discusses the role of motivation in habit formation and argues that motivation is overrated when it comes to sticking with habits. He suggests focusing on creating systems and processes that make good habits easy and enjoyable, rather than relying on motivation alone. For example, if you want to develop a habit of exercising regularly, you could set up a routine where you exercise at the same time every day and make it enjoyable by listening to music or finding a workout buddy. This can help to build momentum and make the habit feel more manageable, even on days when motivation is low. Clear also emphasizes the importance of having a why behind your habits, which provides a sense of purpose and meaning that can help you stick with the habit, even when motivation is low. He suggests finding a deeper reason for your habits, such as improving your health or relationships, and using this as a source of inspiration and motivation. For example, if you want to develop a habit of eating healthier, you could focus on the long-term benefits of improved health and energy, rather than just the short-term pleasure of indulging in unhealthy foods. Overall, the concept of small, incremental changes leading to significant improvements is a central idea in Atomic Habits. CLEAR provides multiple examples to illustrate this concept and offers strategies for implementing small changes in a way that leads to lasting improvement. He emphasizes the importance of focusing on systems and processes rather than motivation and of finding a deeper why to provide purpose and meaning to your habits. Section 3. How to Change Habits The third section of Atomic Habits focuses on how to change habits. One of the key ideas in Atomic Habits is that habits are formed through a process called habit formation loop, which consists of four stages. Cue, craving, response, and reward. The cue prompts the desire or craving for the reward, which in turn leads to the response or routine, and finally the reward reinforces the behavior, completing the loop. To change a habit, Clear suggests that the key is to identify and alter the cue, routine, and reward associated with the habit. He offers several strategies for doing this, including the 1% rule, which involves making small, incremental changes to the cue, routine, or reward in order to nudge the habit in a different direction. For example, if you want to develop the habit of exercising regularly, you could start by committing to just 1% more exercise each day, such as walking an extra block or doing one extra push-up. By making small changes, you can gradually build up to more significant improvements over time. The fourth law of behavior change, which involves making the cue or routine more obvious or more attractive in order to increase the likelihood of the habit being performed. For example, if you want to develop the habit of reading more, you could make the cue more obvious by placing a book in a prominent location, such as on your nightstand or on the coffee table, where it is hard to miss. This can help to remind you of the habit and increase the likelihood of you performing it. You could also make the routine more attractive by choosing a book that you are genuinely interested in, which can help to make the habit more enjoyable and therefore more likely to stay. The second law of behavior change, which involves making the reward of the habit more satisfying in order to increase the likelihood of the habit being performed. For example, if you want to develop the habit of saving more money, you could make the reward more satisfying by setting a specific financial goal such as saving for a down payment on a house and tracking your progress towards that goal. Seeing the tangible progress you are making can provide a sense of accomplishment and motivation to continue with the habit. 
In addition to these strategies for altering the cues, routines, and rewards associated with a habit, CLEAR also emphasizes the importance of setting clear goals and creating a positive environment to support good habits. He suggests that setting specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound SMART goals can help to focus your efforts and increase the likelihood of success. For example, if your goal is to develop the habit of exercising regularly, you could set a SMART goal of exercising for 30 minutes three times a week for the next month. This goal is specific, measurable, 30 minutes, three times a week, achievable. It is a reasonable amount of exercise for most people. Relevant, it aligns with your desire to exercise regularly. And time-bound, one month. In terms of creating a positive environment, CLEAR recommends setting up systems and creating accountability, as well as finding ways to make good habits more enjoyable. For example, if you want to develop the habit of eating healthier, you could set up a system for meal planning and grocery shopping, such as using a meal planning app or scheduling a specific time each week to plan and shop for meals. This can help to make the habit more manageable and reduce the likelihood of falling back on unhealthy options. You could also find a friend or family member to hold you accountable for sticking to your plan, such as texting each other updates on your progress or meeting up for a weekly check-in. Having someone to hold you accountable can provide motivation and support to stick with the habit. You could also try making healthy eating more enjoyable by experimenting with new recipes or finding healthy options of your favorite foods. By finding ways to make the habit more enjoyable, you are more likely to stick with it in the long term. Overall, clear strategies for changing habits involve identifying and modifying the cues, routines, and rewards associated with the habit, setting clear goals, and creating a positive environment to support good habits. By following these strategies, it is possible to make small, incremental changes that lead to lasting improvement. It is important to remember that change is a process, and it may take time to develop new habits or break old ones. However, by focusing on making progress rather than perfection and being patient and consistent, you can create lasting change and improve your overall well-being. Section 4. Identity-Based Habits The fourth section of Atomic Habits introduces the concept of identity-based habits, which involve aligning your habits with your values and goals. Clear argues that when your habits reflect your sense of self, you are more likely to stick with them because they become part of your identity. He explains that our identity is shaped by our habits and that we can use this to our advantage by choosing habits that are consistent with the person we want to become. For example, if your identity is that of a runner, you are more likely to prioritize running as a habit because it aligns with your sense of self. Clear suggests that one way to develop identity-based habits is to ask yourself the question, who do I want to be? And then choose habits that are consistent with that identity. He also recommends setting identity-based goals, which involve setting goals that are consistent with your values and sense of self. Clear offers several examples of identity-based habits and goals, including a writer who develops the habit of writing every day as part of their identity as a writer. A musician who sets the goal of practicing their instrument for a certain number of hours each week as part of their identity as a musician. A student who develops the habit of studying consistently as part of their identity as a dedicated and successful student. Clear argues that identity-based habits and goals can be particularly powerful because they provide a sense of purpose and meaning that can help to motivate and sustain good habits over the long term. In addition to aligning your habits with your values and goals, CLEAR also emphasizes the importance of creating a positive environment to support good habits. He suggests that this can involve setting up systems and creating accountability, as well as finding ways to make good habits more enjoyable. For example, if you want to develop the habit of exercising regularly, you could join a gym or find a workout buddy to create accountability and make the habit more enjoyable. If you want to develop the habit of eating healthier, you could set up a system for meal planning and grocery shopping and find a friend or family member 
to hold you accountable for sticking to your plan. You could also try making healthy eating more enjoyable by experimenting with new recipes or finding healthy options of your favorite foods. Overall, the concept of identity-based habits and the importance of creating a positive environment are key ideas in Section 4 of Atomic Habits. By aligning your habits with your values and goals, and setting up systems and creating accountability to support good habits, it is possible to make small, incremental changes that lead to lasting improvement. Section 5. Breaking Bad Habits In the fifth section of Atomic Habits, James Clear discusses the strategies for breaking negative habits. He suggests using the inversion principle, which involves reversing the cues and rewards associated with the habit. This means identifying the trigger or cue that initiates the habit and finding a way to change it, as well as identifying the reward that reinforces the habit and finding a way to change it. For example, if you have a habit of procrastinating on tasks, you could try reversing the cue by setting a specific time to start the task and reversing the reward by rewarding yourself for completing the task rather than procrastinating. By changing the cue and reward, you are disrupting the habit loop and making it less likely that the habit will be performed. Clear also recommends using the two-minute rule, which involves starting a new habit with a very small, manageable action that can be easily integrated into your daily routine. This helps to build momentum and make the habit feel more manageable. For example, if you want to develop a habit of exercising regularly, you could start with a small, manageable action, such as doing a few push-ups or going for a short walk, and gradually building up to more challenging workouts. In addition to these strategies, Clear emphasizes the importance of finding an accountability partner or joining a group or community to support your efforts to break a negative habit. Having someone to share your progress with and hold you accountable can be a powerful motivator. This could be a friend, family member, or colleague who is also working on breaking a similar habit. Clear also introduces the four laws of behavior change, which are make it obvious, make the cues for the new habit more obvious so that it is easier to remember to perform the habit. This could involve placing visual reminders in your environment or setting specific times to perform the habit. Make it attractive. Make the new habit more attractive by linking it to something that you enjoy or find rewarding. This could involve finding an enjoyable form of the habit or linking the habit to a desirable outcome or reward. Make it easy. Make the new habit as easy as possible to perform by reducing barriers or obstacles. This could involve simplifying the habit or breaking it down into smaller, more manageable steps. Make it satisfying. Make the reward for the new habit more satisfying by linking it to something that you enjoy or find meaningful. This could involve rewarding yourself with something enjoyable after completing the habit or finding a sense of accomplishment or meaning in the habit itself. This can provide a sense of accountability and support that can help you stay committed to your goals and overcome any obstacles or setbacks. Overall, clear strategies for breaking bad habits involve using the inversion principle and the two-minute rule, finding a deeper why behind your habits, and using accountability and social support to help stay on track. By following these strategies, it is possible to break negative habits involve identifying and reversing the cues and rewards associated with the habit, using the two-minute rule to build momentum, and using the four laws of behavior change to make the new habit more obvious, attractive, easy, and satisfying. By applying these strategies, you can effectively break negative habits and create new, positive ones. Section 6. The Role of Motivation in the sixth section of Atomic Habits, Clear discusses the role of motivation in habit formation and argues that motivation is overrated when it comes to sticking with habits. He explains that motivation is often unpredictable and can fluctuate from day to day, making it unreliable as a driving force for habit formation. Instead of relying on motivation, Clear suggests focusing on creating systems and processes that make good habits easy and enjoyable. For example, 
If you want to develop a habit of exercising regularly, rather than trying to rely on motivation to get you to the gym, you could try setting up a consistent schedule, finding a workout buddy, or joining a gym to create accountability and make the habit more enjoyable. By focusing on the systems and processes that support the habit, you can make it easier and more enjoyable to stick with rather than relying on motivation alone. Clear also emphasizes the importance of having a why behind your habits, which provides a sense of purpose and meaning that can help you stick with the habit, even when motivation is low. He suggests asking yourself why you want to develop a particular habit and reminding yourself of that purpose when motivation is low. For example, if you want to develop a habit of eating healthy, you might remind yourself that it's not just about losing weight or looking a certain way, but about feeling more energetic and improving your overall health and well-being. This sense of purpose can help keep you motivated when motivation is lacking. If you want to develop a habit of meditating daily rather than trying to rely on motivation to get you to sit down and meditate, you could try setting up a consistent time and place for your meditation practice and using a meditation app or hiring a meditation coach to make the habit more enjoyable and easy to stick with. If you want to develop a habit of saving money rather than trying to rely on motivation to remind you to put money into your savings account, you could try setting up automatic transfers from your checking account to your savings account or using a budgeting app to help you track your spending and make saving easier. If you want to develop a habit of flossing daily, rather than trying to rely on motivation to remember to floss, you could try setting up a consistent time and place for flossing and using a flossed pick or flavored floss to make the habit more enjoyable and easy to stick with. If you want to develop a habit of learning a new language, rather than trying to rely on motivation to get you to practice regularly, you could try setting up a consistent time and place for language practice and using a language learning app or hiring a tutor to make the habit more enjoyable and easy to stick with. Overall, these examples demonstrate how focusing on creating systems and processes that make good habits easy and enjoyable rather than relying on motivation alone. Atomic Habits suggests that motivation is not the key to sticking with good habits and that it is more effective to focus on creating systems and processes that make good habits easy and enjoyable and finding a sense of purpose and meaning behind our habits to help us stay motivated. By focusing on these factors, we can more effectively develop good habits and break bad ones. Section 7 the role of discipline. In the seventh section of Atomic Habits, James Clear discusses the role of discipline in habit formation and argues that discipline is not a finite resource. Instead, he suggests that discipline is like a muscle that can be developed through practice. Clear offers several strategies for building discipline, including setting clear goals by setting specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals, you can create a sense of purpose and direction that can help you stay motivated and focused. For example, instead of setting a goal to exercise more, you could set a goal to exercise for 30 minutes, three times per week. This specific and measurable goal is more likely to lead to success. Creating a positive environment. By setting up systems and creating accountability, you can make it easier to stick with good habits and avoid distractions. For example, you could join a gym or find a workout buddy to create accountability and make the habit of exercising more enjoyable. Using the Seinfeld method, this involves creating a chain of consecutive days in which you complete a specific task or habit. Each day you complete the task, you mark it off on a calendar, and the goal is to build a streak of as many days as possible. This can help you build momentum and keep track of progress. For example, if you want to develop the habit of writing in a journal every day, you could use the Seinfeld method by marking off each day that you write in your journal and striving to build a streak of consecutive days using the don't break the chain method. Similar to the Seinfeld method, this involves creating a chain of consecutive days in which you complete a specific task or habit. 
The goal is to build a streak of as many days as possible and to avoid breaking the chain. For example, if you want to develop the habit of meditating every day, you could use the don't break the chain method by marking off each day that you meditate and striving to build a streak of consecutive days. Using the habit stacking method. This involves linking a new habit to an existing habit that you already have, such as reading for 15 minutes after you brush your teeth in the morning. By attaching the new habit to an existing routine, you can make it easier to remember and stick with. For example, if you want to develop the habit of reading more, you could use the habit stacking method by reading for 15 minutes after you brush your teeth every morning. Using the if-then planning technique. This involves creating a specific plan for how you will handle specific situations or triggers that may cause you to break your habits. For example, if I get home from work and I'm feeling tired, then I will go for a walk instead of watching TV. By creating a plan in advance for how you will handle specific situations, you can increase your chances of sticking with your habits. Clear also emphasizes the importance of having a why behind your habits. He suggests finding a reason or purpose that is bigger than yourself, such as improving your health or helping others, to provide a sense of meaning and motivation. Overall, discipline is an important aspect of habit formation, and by using strategies like setting clear goals, creating a positive environment, and using habit-building techniques like the Seinfeld method and if-then planning, you can develop the discipline necessary to stick with good habits and break bad ones. Conclusion In conclusion, Atomic Habits by James Clear is a valuable resource for anyone looking to build good habits and break bad ones. It offers practical strategies for making small, incremental changes that lead to lasting improvement and emphasizes the importance of aligning habits with our values and goals, creating a positive environment to support good habits, and using the inversion principle and the two-minute rule to break negative habits. CLEAR also discusses the role of discipline in habit formation and offers several strategies for building discipline, including setting clear goals, creating a positive environment, using habit stacking and the Seinfeld method, and focusing on creating systems and processes that make good habits easy and enjoyable. He also emphasizes the importance of having a why behind your habits, which provides a sense of purpose and meaning that can help you stick with the habit even when motivation is low. Overall, Atomic Habits provides a comprehensive and practical guide to building good habits and breaking bad ones, and offers valuable insights and strategies that can help readers make small, incremental changes that lead to lasting improvement. So, it is a must-read book for anyone looking to improve their habits and make lasting positive changes in their lives. Thank you for staying with us thus far. You can find the link in the description to purchase the book Atomic Habits for a discount. See you in our next video.